This is my water cup that's dedicated to just painting, so I don't drink out of it. So if you're an artist, uh, safety and health practices are important because they'll prolong your life. A lot of these materials used in art are not very good for you. These, these same things that create these vibrant reds and yellows have cadmium in them and cadmium if you're exposed to a lot of cadmium but it can cause cancer so you don't want drinking it or ingesting it so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to use a medium flat and a flat looks like this it's a little rectangular shape brush like this and i'm going to uh let's see here i'm just going to uh wet the paper around the tomato just a little bit and I can kind of see where the water is beating where the Crayola crayon is I'm glad I, I did that um, I can see there's some hair coming off this brush so that's a sign it's a sign of a cheap brush if the hair starts falling out that means it's not such a great brush but for this demonstration I'm just going to use this so the palette is here so the mixing surface is here, and after this gets all dirty, you can just use a wet paper towel and wipe it clean and just let the kit dry out and then close it. So I'm going to use this uh, reddish color, and watercolor is very, very concentrated. Even these little cakes are concentrated. These cakes on my set are removable so that when you run out of a color, you just buy the, the used up color and just replace it. Every time you pick up a new color, you have to wash the brush out. So I'm gonna pick up this color here and see what that looks like. And that's kind of a purplish color. Look at that. The hair is just coming off that brush, so cheap. Okay, so now I'm going to water down that purplish color and I'm going to put a little wash of that over here. Just purplish color. Then I'm going to use just this little bit of red color and I'm going to put a, a wash of that over the purplish color. Okay, and I'm just going to put that right around wherever I see the purple. You can get realistic effects with watercolor, but generally people turn to using watercolor because they want kind of a loose, free, kind of uh, flowy painting. And people who choose to do watercolor normally are not really um, concerned with being very, very super tight in their work, normally. So I'm just going to take some of this green and just kind of bring it into the pink areas here with these lines, these streaks. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with a little bit of um, brown and I'm going to mix that brown with a little bit of blue. So pick up a little bit of brown and I'm going to put it over here on my palette. Then I'm going to uh, pick up a little bit of uh, blue, this dark blue right over here. I'm going to moisten the watercolor, get kind of work it, and then bring it over to my brown and mix it together. And what that does is it creates a really nice, uh, soft, dark gray. And I can use that as a nice shade color to mix with any other color to make a nice shade. So then I can bring some of that into my green, green, bring it into the green. As you see, you could see the direction of the strokes of my paintbrush. I'm trying to kind of copy the streaks, the direction of the streaks of green in the body of the tomato. Right now my tomato looks a little too pinky. So I'm going to mix a little bit of orange with my red and create like a red-orange color. Mix a little bit of purple in with that. So back to the orange. Okay. 
In watercolor, you don't use white. That's why I kept the white still packaged. You're supposed to use the white of the paper and you just use various degrees of um, dilution, water, to, to represent your white. You're supposed to, it's a very transparent medium, so what you're supposed to do is really show the white of the paper through your color and not use, not have to use white. White watercolor looks very chalky and will make your color too solid and opaque looking and then uh, that's kind of against the whole point of using watercolor. You want nice transparent colors. Nice transparent colors right here. Okay. Now I'm going to let that dry a little bit and work into the calyx, which is this little, the remains of the flower. I'm going to go in a little bit lighter and use this light green, paint the light green in here. And if I want a nice clean, um, detailed line and I don't want you know paints to, to paint colors to run into each other I use uh, just direct color wash on dry paper I don't wet the paper I don't pre-wet the paper or anything like that use very light pressure on the tip of your watercolor uh, paintbrush if you want a really skinny line Okay, these little streaks of color, what you can do that are on top of the, the Crayola wax is to use a clean brush and just go in there and mop them up. Just clean them off with some clean water and a clean brush. Just kind of just pick up the color and just mop it up like you would mop a floor. So I'm going to mix a little bit more of that blue and brown soft black like that. As you see, you just you need to use just a little bit of watercolor. You don't need a lot of you don't need to use a lot of watercolor to to cover a large area. Just use little strokes of color. So I made that nice soft gray right here. And I'm going to mix that in with my green. And that way I can make the little tips right here darker. That's darker, the underside of this one darker. This tip was darker and then it's here dark where it changed the angle. Right here is actually the underside of a leaf of, a, of the petal. Right here, I want to kind of define the bottom of this stem. There's a little shadow there. Okay, and then right here, I did not draw a petal. So I'm going to just draw it in right now with this darker color right here, like that, boom. Okay. So I'm going to put a little bit of shading on the side of my stem. So I'm just going to mix this little grayish color with my green on either side of my stem. Okay. And this gray color is great for my shadow. So I'm going to put that gray color right where the two oval shadows meet and just paint that in there. Okay. 
And then I'm going to water it down just a little bit more to paint on the outside of these shadows. Actually, I think I want to just pre-wet the paper here so that I can do a little bit of wet on wet technique with putting the shadow color right here on the outside of each of these little ovals and then have them kind of bleed in toward the inside of the shadow area so that the blend is a little smoother than just dry brushing right there. Okay, I want to pick up a little bit of this purple and this red here and mix that in with the gray that's on my palette right here, this grayish green. And then I want to put it right here because the color of that tomato is going to also reflect in the shadow. So color can also reflect, especially if this is a white tablecloth. You know, it's going to cast its color on this area a little bit very little bit of color on here but in the middle it it does it does show up kind of dark maybe use a little bit of brown too and maybe make it much darker right underneath the, the tomato right here make that shadow a little bit darker what's the dark part of a shadow called that's the umbra and the umbra can be also a color the darker color in a shadow. Okay. Now I'm going to just kind of tone down this um, this green with that grayish color again. I think it's a little bit too strong, so I'm going to put a little bit of this darker grayish color over the green to tone it down to make it a little less bright green. This green here is also looking a little bit too light green, so I'm going to mix a little bit of brown and green together and do kind of a uh, army green. And I might even put a little bit of blue and see what happens. Ooh, I like that. So I'm going to use that and put that right over here and then darken up that green area with these new strokes of blue, green, brown, 